Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. After talking with many people who love the game, there are almost always a few specific moments that were really impactful for people. The first time the sun explodes, when they first fall into the black hole, when they reach the eye for the first time, and especially when they finally get to meet a member of the long lost species we've been studying for so long, namely Solanum. And in today's loop, I want to talk about Solomon and explore the mechanics in the game to see if we can actually use those rules to rescue our friend. To start off the video, I'll just set the scene for everyone, even though most of you probably already know. To land on the quantum moon, we have to utilize two of the three quantum rules. We know that a quantum object is in every possible location until observed, at which point it converts to a single, certain possible outcome. And the gnome I discovered that somehow looking at an image of an object is the same thing as looking at an object itself in the terms of observation. So to land on the quantum moon, all we have to do is spot it and take a picture of it, and after we do so, it becomes certain and we can land on it easily. But once we're down, one of the first things you will notice is a gnome skeleton lying right near the North Pole. And most of you probably know this too, this is actually Solanum skeleton, a possible version of her that died from the ghost matter explosion when she landed. And visiting every planet's version of the quantum moon will reveal that there's a version of her on each one of them that did the same. From Ash Twin to Dark Bramble, we will find this skeleton on the North Pole. And if we turn around, it'll even change to a different possible version of her skeleton. Meaning each planet has multiple possible versions on which Solanum dies. But luckily for us, a single version of the Quantum Moon has a version of Solanum where she survives. And if we utilize the third Quantum Roll and Quantum Tower, we can teleport to the legendary sixth location of the Quantum Moon where the moon actually orbits its original home body, the Eye of the Universe. Here, Solanum took a journey to sort of experience her coming of age ceremony and be recognized by her clan, but it ended up being her safe haven from the exploding interloper, and she was able to avoid the ghost matter's deadly effects here, and so she lived, alone, seemingly unmoving really for hundreds of thousands of years. Yet to her, it's not really that bad. She can't tell if it's been a few minutes or a few hundred thousand years, but she does sort of know something isn't quite right here. She tells us that she feels that her story has come to an end. And most fans tend to agree with her. If she were to leave the sixth version of the quantum moon, the chances are she would probably revert to the versions of herself on whatever planet that she would end up on, which we know to be a dead version of herself anywhere but here. And so if she left, it's very likely that she would actually die, and maybe even the alive version of her would disappear in that process of trying to leave, which, I mean, duh. And I agree with that. For 280,000 years, I don't see anything that could have gotten Solanum safely off the quantum moon. But that's where we come in. And you know, this is Outer Wilds. It may not be too ridiculous to think that we can somehow save the correct version of Solanum, the alive version, and maybe even bring her home to live out the rest of her days, or 22 minutes, in relative normalcy. And we know the rules of the quantum phenomenon, and we have the knowledge and some ability to help in this situation, theoretically. To do so wouldn't even be flying in the face of any quantum rules, in fact, I'd say it follows them. And as of now, I'm just proposing we do exactly what we did to land on the quantum moon in the first place. In theory, once we find her alive and well at the sixth location, we should just be able to take a picture of her. I mean, right? Ensure that she has collapsed to an alive possibility of herself and boom, snap a selfie. And bang, we've ensured that this possibility remains certain. With the picture of her and us always observing the alive version, she can't revert back to a dead one. And that should basically be all we need. Now at this point, you think, well, it should be easy to get off the quantum moon, right? We should be able to just head back to the quantum tower and teleport out of there. But the sad thing is, fictional physics doesn't just stop because you hadn't thought about it before the theory, or at least, yeah, I hadn't thought about it. And taking a picture of Solanum would also be taking a picture of the quantum moon at its sixth location. So if we try to use the tower, it'll literally never move. And this actually holds true no matter where we are. 
If we land on Timber Hearst's version of the Quantum Moon and take a picture of the ground, then say use the Nomai shuttle to teleport to Brittle Hollow, go get a milkshake somewhere, visit Feldspar, and then come back home, the Quantum Moon would still be orbiting Timber Hearth after all of that, since that version of it is being observed via the picture in our helmet. And so, long story short, we just can't take the Quantum Tower out of here to go to another version. As long as we have this picture, we are stuck here. But the sixth location of the Quantum Moon actually does have something no other version of the Quantum Moon has. It has the vortex above its north pole that mimics the eye of the universe. And this vortex actually serves as an easy exit for us as a player, as it always takes us to Timber Hearth. Or, maybe more accurately, it converts us to the Timber Hearth possibility of our quantum character, but even when doing so, throughout that whole process, the image of Solonum is preserved on our screen and observed the whole time. In theory, she should just be able to jump into the vortex with us, and since we're observing that image of the alive version, that possibility of her should stay certain, and she shouldn't be able to revert to the dead version of herself throughout this process, and so she should just plop down on Timber Hearth's version of the Quantum Moon with us, or maybe be plopped down on some other version of the Quantum Moon. But either way, after that, she should be off the sixth version of the Quantum Moon, where she should be able to just use her shuttle's return feature to teleport home in an instant, or really even just like jump really high and jetpack home. And once she's home, she's home. She's no longer a quantum object entangled with anything. She's her own independent being, so she should just be able to go on living normally without being observed anymore. And again, we didn't break any quantum rules throughout this process. We only really followed them. We observed her, took a picture of her to ensure she remained certain, and then sort of maybe kidnapped her a little bit since we couldn't really talk to her at all, and she had you know, we had no way to communicate what's happening to her, but that's irrelevant right now. What the point is, is we follow the rules. That's the point. And we took an exit that's always open to us, the vortex above Solomon. And that always takes us to a place where we can easily leave the quantum moon. Now, of course, an argument can be made that we just don't understand this process well enough yet. Does the quantum moon vortex take us to Timber Hearth because we believe really hard? Or something about quantum probabilities? Or did the vortex just record us as a quantum possibility and then we somehow just sort of converted or took over our Timber Hearth quantum version? I don't know, it's all up in the air. But hypothetically, I feel like this logic is sound. And really, the only thing that we would be risking is 22 minutes of, you know, like 1 15th of Solomon's possible versions of herself. And she really hasn't had much of a life in the last 280,000 years just standing in the same place in the quantum moon anyway. But with that aside, there are still a few things that give me pause with this plan. Even if we take a picture of the alive version of Solonum and then jump through the vortex, when we land on Timber Hearth, we still find the skeletonized version of Solonum there. And by all the accounts of the rules of the game, she shouldn't be there like that. She should be her alive version. And, you know, something else that I just sort of noticed that is extremely strange, and it's the fact that if we have this picture of Solonum, we shouldn't even really be able to go through this vortex at all. We shouldn't be able to be here. Looking at a picture of the six versions quantum moon surface should lock that version in as a certainty, right? And yet here we are standing on Timber Hearst's version as if it were the certain one. And, you know, indeed it is because we can leave it as if it were certain. And not only that, we can actually pop out of the universe next to Timber Hearth. This picture of the sixth version somehow serves as a picture for Timber Hearth's version. As long as we look at this picture, that moon will continue to orbit Timber Hearth. I'm not sure if this is something the devs didn't think of or it's a glitch of some kind or something, but it's pretty confusing to me. Logic dictates that if we take a picture of the sixth version, it should be locked into that place. And, you know, we shouldn't be able to get on to the Timber Hearth version. And even if we did, even if it somehow still teleports us home, okay, yeah, let's just roll with it. That's Quark of the Quantum Moon. Well, Solonum's skeleton shouldn't be there, so I don't really know how to take all that. Like I said, I have to imagine it's an oversight by the devs, I think, because I think that's an oversight I would make if I were making this game. You can never keep all those possibilities in mind. Like, they had, they had to have a whole tree and some just slip through. 
but there's still a chance that maybe that's just how it works. I don't know. It's just all up in the air, and considering it all does give me a little bit of pause. Because, look, if this is true, and somehow the photo of the six versions Quantum Moon somehow locks Timber Hearth's version into reality, then maybe by taking that picture and leaving, we're locking the dead version of Solonim into reality, the skeletonized version. So, I don't know, but I still think it's probably worth a try, and that is if it's even something she would have wanted, because we have to talk about this. Because when you really think about it, we may look at it as saving Solonim, rescuing her from her time trapped on the quantum moon, but we may just be bringing her sorrow and pain. Remember, to Solonim, she kind of just landed on the quantum moon. Time feels a bit off to her, but she hasn't aged at all. So how would you feel if you say, popped off to the local supermarket, spent a few minutes in Al 3, say, and turned around to find everyone you've ever known or loved, in fact, just everyone on the planet, really, has all died or somehow been dead for 280,000 years already. The place that you called home has crumbled and withered away to a fraction of its former glory, and your usual way of life has been lost to you forever. Because that's sort of what we'd be plunging Solonim into if we rescued her from the Quantum Moon. I'd like to say that our new Forge friendship and the Harthians' kindness and want for intellectual progress would likely be a welcoming and engaging environment for her that could maybe perhaps lift her spirits and convince her to persevere through that intense loss and grief, and she could almost definitely integrate quite well into our society, I think. And if life lived on for many, many more years, then yeah, I'd say that's probably the right thing to do, the good choice to make. But as it sits now, I just, I, I think it's probably best to leave Solnum alone in her state of bliss. Allow her to live in her tranquil state of, I think my journey is at an end, instead of saving her only to reveal, you know, mass tragedy has befallen her. And previously, I made a video called The Six Locations Ghostly Companion or something like that. And while writing that video, I made myself intensely sad thinking about the notion of Solonim being stuck on the quantum moon forever and just her story in general. And of course, this video brought up that same emotion. Her story is just seriously, seriously sad. And I think probably at the end of the day, if I could, even with a few minutes left in the universe, I would rescue Solonim and take her with us on our final journey. We'd first go to the Ash Twins core, maybe stop over at her childhood home, the Sunless City. Then we'd be off to the orbital probe tracking module with the core giants deep to get the eyes coordinates. And maybe, if she's interested, I'd take her to go meet the prisoner and see the stranger and explain the whole story. And then finally, we'd go to the vessel to reach the eye of the universe itself where she could undergo the final journey her clan always dreamt of herself. I think, even though it'd probably be painful for her, it'd be worth it. They were all risking their life to find the eye anyway, and they knew that. And at least in this scenario, she would be able to make use of that sacrifice on her own accord, personally. And I would love to see the universe that the Nomai's memories and possibilities would create 14.3 billion years later. But what about you? Do you think we'd be able to save Solonim with the quantum rolls and mechanics we know? If we could, would that even be an okay thing to do? Just let me know what you think in the comments. And if you liked the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. As usual, a special thank you to the members here. And as always, this is a lore explorer diving deep into the mechanics so you don't have to. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.